Owning a homestead and growing your own food is expensive. Between feed, equipment, and infrastructure, it adds up quickly. Although I can't change the price of wood or machinery, the one thing I can change is our feed bill. I spend a lot of time thinking about our homestead. I mean, it is our entire life after all. There's always things to improve, whether that be our pasture quality or our routine. Our pigs go through a lot of feed, and not just because they're pigs, but because we have a lot of them. If I could accomplish one thing on our homestead, it would be self-sufficiency. Growing, raising, and cooking all of our own food, cutting our own hay, but the one thing that trumps all of my goals is to have a zero dollar feed bill. The cost of your feed bill really does depend on what livestock you're feeding. If you have chickens, they don't take very much. If you have cows, they're happy with just hay or grass, but pigs, they eat a lot of food. The first and easiest way to reduce your feed bill is by feeding your kitchen scraps. We don't waste any food scraps in our house and we even get food scraps from Ashland's family. We had some leftover food from Thanksgiving and instead of throwing it in the trash, we are going to feed it to our chickens. Let's go feed some chickens some food scraps. Oh, the lovely sound of food scraps hitting the ground. If you don't have a strong stomach, I'd recommend you take your food scraps out to the chickens right away. The possibilities are endless with food scraps. You can ask your neighbors, your friends, your family, and anyone else that doesn't think you're a lunatic to save their scraps in a five gallon bucket and you pick them up once or twice a week. Once or twice a week, I head over to our local food bank to collect all of the food scraps that Walmart and Kroger and all of the big box stores have donated to them but went bad and they can't use it anymore. It's pretty simple, if you need to feed pigs, or animals and you want to save some money give your food banks a call they usually have a lot of stuff to get rid of because a lot of people donate to them and they just can't use it all let's go pick up some free food so that wall of boxes behind me yeah that's the incredible amount of food you can get for free from your local food bank mind you this is in a pretty small town a gentleman asked me if i'm feeding all this to chickens yeah. I think I'd need about 500 chickens, but thankfully this wall of food is no match for our 10 pigs. This is absolutely incredible. Huge, huge amount of food for us, for these pigs. I can't even tell you how long that's gonna last. Last time I went and grabbed some from them, it was about seven boxes of these, and that lasted us like five days for the pigs. We just filled up the back of the truck. This may last us a week and a half, maybe even two weeks, we'll see. I'm gonna be back there on Monday again, getting even more food. We might be overfeeding our pigs at some point. Most of this is like a bunch of bread that's got some moldy spots that nobody can eat, or you got big, huge things of lettuce that have gone bad. These pigs tend to go after the bread first. Getting the food from the food bank is really an amazing thing in my opinion. It's such a great way to reduce your feed bill. If you've only got chickens, you could feed a lot of chickens with this. If you only have a couple pigs, depending on how much you get from the food bank, but if it's the same amount we get, we could feed two pigs forever and make them extremely fat and probably overfed with just the food and food scraps and leftovers that we get from the food bank. And I think that is just incredible. Because we have so many pigs, I should probably count them. Because we have 10 pigs, which I have now counted, I guess I didn't know how many pigs we had. We have a lot of food to feed to these guys. And the food bank doesn't always come through with enough food to feed them every single day. But like today, this is all that we have left. We are probably gonna have to feed a little bit of grain with this dinner as well. It takes a huge chunk out of it. It's one step in a three-step process for us in a way that we can reduce our feed bill. In my opinion, it is the easiest, it is the most economical. If you have a food bank near you, give them a call. Even if somebody is picking up food from them and they don't need somebody to come by once a week, twice a week and pick it up, ask them if you can be put on a list and when somebody else backs out, they can give you a call because that's exactly what happened to us. I called my local food bank. They told me, sorry, we already have somebody that comes and picks it up. And uh, I said, can you put me on a list? They put me on a list and I'm not kidding. Four days later, she called me and said, well, he backed out. Can you be our new pig scrap guy? And I was ecstatic. I was so happy that I was able to get that opportunity. And uh, now we have a good relationship. Let's go ahead and take all this food to the pigs, get them fed. Hey, pig. 
It's interesting. I've seen a lot of posts about feeding pigs scraps or feeding animals your scraps, and I've seen a surprisingly amount of people talking about how you shouldn't feed scraps to your pigs. And I just can't believe that. That makes no sense to me. Why we would rather feed a uh, singular diet of grain, which is usually soybean meal and corn, instead of breads and veggies and fruits and all sorts of things. This is way better for them. And I know that because when I put down food scraps and then right next to them I throw a big huge pile of grain, they'll go sniff the grain for a second and they'll go right back to this. This is what they want. And not to get off topic, but one thing I don't think we do enough of is trusting our animal. You know, trusting that they know what to eat, what they, they know what not to eat, that they know what's gonna be healthiest for them, what's gonna give them the most nutrition, because that's what they're gonna go for first. And if you can tell, these guys are going for the bread first, because that's the most protein, that's the most filling. And then they're gonna start picking through the fruits and the you know the veggies, the lettuce and all that stuff that doesn't really give them much nutrition. And even for our little guys here, I mean these piglets are, are good age now. They're they're growing pretty well. When they were younger, we still were feeding them food scraps. The least of my worries for our zero dollar feed bill I hope to accomplish someday is our cows. Our cows eat all hay, they eat only grass, we don't feed any grain to our cattle. That's pretty easy because sun, rain, and uh, good soil grows that for us. One thing we do have to buy though is our hay right now and that is something that we can definitely work on this year 2024 we have really big plans to start cutting our own hay on our back 10 acres and that's exactly where the pigs are at right now that's their job is to turn those back 10 acres into some really good high quality forage for the cows and when we need to and the grass is growing so much that we need to cut it we'll cut it for hay we'll store it in our barn and we'll feed it to them over the winter although the cow of course is the biggest animal on our farm like i said they take the least amount of energy and money to feed because this is what they're eating green grass hay so if you have a few acres, you can definitely have a milk cow and not have to spend any money because if you rotationally graze and you take care of your pastures, you can definitely get a cutting of hay off of them, feed the hay for the winter, send them back out in the spring and just continue that process over and over again, which is self-sufficiency at its finest. It doesn't take any inputs to take care of these guys. The other great way to reduce your feed bill is by growing your own feed. We talked about getting food from the food bank. We talked about using your own food scraps that you're tossing out, you know, the bits and pieces from your kitchen. But the next thing I wanna talk about is growing your own grains. We have a big, huge tub of corn that we grew. This is trucker's corn, if you're wondering, trucker's favorite. We also have another tub in this blue one here, which is full as well. But we have tons and tons of corn that we grew. Corn is so incredibly easy to grow. You plant it, and for the most part, you forget about it. As long as you did your timing right, you shouldn't have too many weeds in the mix. And this is organic corn, which is incredible. This is something that I personally here in Kentucky have a very hard time getting. If I can find it, it's awfully expensive and just really isn't economical because when we have a homestead, and I'm talking a real homestead here, and this isn't to hate on other homesteads that are a little more glamorous, but I'm, I'm talking to the people that are trying to feed themselves, feed their families, and do it without so much input. It's not always economical to go buy all of your feed and to have tons of money to spend on this sort of thing. So if you're like me, you value your money, you don't want it going to waste, you wanna get the most out of your money. Growing your own grain and growing your own feed is the way to do it. We have so many ears of corn here that we grew last year. I haven't processed all of them yet. I'm still waiting on a corn sheller. We're gonna be shelling these by hand today. We're gonna to be grinding them up and then we are going to be adding them to our soybean meal, which is really where the majority of the protein comes for our pigs. This corn isn't very high in protein, but the soybean is very high in protein and also has a really good fat content if it's organic and unprocessed like ours is. This right here is my Every Grow grain mill. I absolutely love this thing. It comes with different size screens so you can decide what size and how coarse of a grind you want. For a small scale, this does really well. You can pick this up for about $200. Of course, you can feed your corn whole, 
but if you crack it, it's a little bit more digestible. They get that nutrients on the inside. I've noticed a lot of times if we feed whole corn, it just kind of passes right through the pigs. So not much use there as far as feed if it's just passing through them. So you put all the grain on the top, it collects at the bottom in a five gallon bucket, take it off and you can mix it in your feed. It's awesome. Not all of this corn is extremely big. You can see we've got some really good sizes right there, but not all of it is that big, but this stuff still makes really great feed. It isn't necessarily something you would eat throughout the year. It doesn't really matter. The pigs don't discriminate on the size of their corn. All right, we've got some of our corn on cob. We are going to twist this off. You get some gloves. It's actually not that hard to twist all the grain off of here. If you're doing this on a large scale, it'll take a long time, so I would recommend getting an actual sheller. We just don't have one yet. We're gonna be doing it by hand for today. This is our soybean meal that we grew, harvested, and processed here on our farm. I made a full video on that, so if you wanna check that out, click this link right here. Now we have our corn and our soybean meal. We're all ready to mix these two. Pig feed is so simple, corn and soybean meal. I know some pig feeds have more than that, but this is the generic, typical pig feed that you will see to raise out feeder pigs. We are going to mix up four parts corn, one part soybean meal, and we're gonna make some pig feed. So we got one part, two parts, three parts, four parts, and then we're gonna take one part of our soybean meal. This is where all that protein comes from, and we'll mix that in with the corn, and we're just gonna use our hands to mix it. Now we've got our 16% pig feed, corn, soybean meal, very simple. It's pretty incredible because we put so much work into this feed. I know this is a very small amount. We haven't shelled or harvested our soybeans yet. We are doing them in small bits to show you this video. So incredible because this is organic pig feed, which is so incredibly hard to find. If you go to Tractor Supply in at least my area of Kentucky, you can't get organic pig feed. The closest place to me is all the way in Western Kentucky, about three hours away. It's not economical. It's very expensive. This was very, very cheap, almost essentially free because of how little it takes to grow soybean and corn. When we were feeding them breakfast this morning, I was talking about how these pigs are really good at making their own choices. They're good at deciding what has the most protein for them, what is the most filling. And like I said, what I have seen is that they enjoy the food scraps from the food bank a lot more than they do our feed. For their dinner feeding, because we have to feed them grain and the food bank food, the breads and all that, I wanna see what they like the most. To make this as fair as possible, I'm gonna try and drop the grain and the bread and food scraps at the same time. Mike's just laying in it at this point. Oh man, you know your pigs are well fed when they're starting to lay in the food. So as you can see, for the most part, they're just going after the bread. That's their absolute favorite thing. That's not to say they won't eat this grain at some point because they definitely will. Penelope's just stepping in it. And this is why I was talking about letting the pig decide what is best for them. Feeding a singular diet of corn and soybean meal is not going to be that beneficial to a pig, whereas putting them on pasture and feeding them a diverse diet of food scraps is really really the best way to feed your pigs in my opinion. And the most beautiful part of that is the grain is the most expensive part. The cheapest way to feed is gonna be by giving them food scraps and pasture because for the most part of your home setting, you're gonna have grass. And for most people, you're most likely gonna have a food bank nearby, which makes those two options, food bank and pasture, the cheapest way to feed your animals for free. Another great option and super easy option is to put your pigs on pasture. Like I was talking about, cows, they love pasture. They'll eat as much grass as they possibly can. 
pigs, especially if you have an Idaho pasture pig like we have, will eat a lot of grass. They will get about half of their diet just from the forage found on the ground here. And that's a big plus for us because it reduces our feed bill even more. And chickens, we all know chickens love their greens. Saving your food scraps, pasturing your animals, calling your local food bank, getting the food that's gonna end up in the landfill anyway, and growing your own grain really are in my opinion, the best way is to reduce your feed bill. It is how we are feeding these pigs for zero dollars right now. And that's pretty incredible. And that may not be year round. You might not be able to reduce your feed bill to zero every single day. Maybe it's only one day a week you cut out, but anything you can do to reduce your feed bill is a huge plus for your homestead. If you're thinking about growing your own grain, you're just not too sure, I would encourage you to try it. I did this year and it was the first year I ever did. I have never grown corn, I've never grown soybean, and it was a learning experience. And like I said, you should watch our soybean harvesting video so you can get an insight and my opinion on growing soybean. I think growing corn is gonna be awesome. I think it's gonna be super easy once we get a sheller to process it and feed it to the pigs. And uh, of course, it's very easy to multiply, very easy to grow, very drought tolerant. I just wanna encourage you to you know, take a chance, get out of your comfort zone, learn some things. I hope that this video was an inspiration to show you that it is possible. Uh, there's a lot of ways and there's probably ways that I didn't even think about. Things like calling your local restaurants. If you have any other ideas on great ways to reduce your feed bill, whether that be pigs or chickens, leave a comment below. I'm really curious to see what your opinion is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.